Hi guys, and welcome back. So, today we are going to learn how to make a sock on the loom. I am going to show you the Kitchener cast on to do your toe shaping. I'm gonna show you how to do your heel shaping and all the other good parts of the sock. This particular sock is being done on a 56 peg loom by KB Looms. For the demonstration of this sock, I will be using the 64 peg loom, which is considered the his loom, but it's also an average adult size sock. Um, the sock looms come in a container much like this one. You get the hers and the his set. And like I said, they are by KB Looms. You can get these um, at some big box stores. Um, Hobby Lobby, Joann's. You can also get them on Amazon and you can get them from kblooms.com. Something else that you're going to need in order to successfully work this pattern is you're gonna need some type of stitch markers. I just happened to get these at KB Looms because I like the way they're made. Um, you can definitely use the little uh, rubber bands from the Dollar Tree or anything that you have already on hand to mark your loom. You're also going to need some kind of loom hook. Typically, all these looms do come with their own hooks. I just prefer the ergonomic ones. So, uh, this is what we're gonna need. I am going to show you how to mark the loom for the 64 peg loom. After that, I'm going to insert a little clip that shows you how to do the Kitchener cast on, <laughs> and it is on the 56 peg loom. So that way, if you decide that you wanna use the 56 peg loom instead of the 64, you will already, um, with that video, will know how to mark that loom as well. So, um, I have my stitch marker here at one end, which is blue. Directly across from that, I have my kind of neon yellow one. And that is just dividing the loom in half so that I can do my short row shapings. I have Counting the end stitch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. On this side, I have eleven on this side, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in the middle. So, what we're gonna do, and don't worry, I will go into more detail when we get to this point but we're gonna be working back and forth, wrapping and turning each one of these pegs until there's two loops on each of these pegs from this stitch marker to this stitch marker and this stitch marker to this one. Then once we get that completed, then we'll start our increasing and we'll work back and forth until we've worked all those loops back off. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and insert that clip right here that shows you how to do the Kitchener cast on. Like I said, the only difference is the amount of pegs. If you're gonna use this one, mark the loom, like I said, for this one. If you're gonna use the 56 peg loom, then mark the loom the way that I did in this clip. Hi guys, and welcome to the Lopsided Crafter. My name is Erica, and today I am going to show you how to do the Kitchener cast on so that you can do toe up socks on the loom. Let's get started. Hi guys and welcome back. So in this demonstration, we will be using Perfect Pair by Loops and Threads of Michaels. This particular color is pink Cadillac, 454 yards, 
3.5 ounces, 415 meters or 100 grams. It is a super fine fingering weight yarn. It is 70% acrylic, 23% viscose from bamboo and 7% polyester. We're gonna be using the 56 peg loom from KB Looms. This comes in the his and her set, KB Looms, 56 pegs. Now, with the Kitchener cast on, what you wanna do is determine which way you feel more comfortable working on the loom, and that is how you will start. But before we do that, you need to think about marking your loom. This particular loom, I have one blue stitch marker and three purple markers. And the reason why I have those, there is no specifically marked first peg on the KB looms, at least on this particular loom. So I have one peg marked with a blue marker. The one directly across from it has a purple marker just to show me that that is the loom divided in half. These two purple markers are for my short row shaping for my toes and heels. This particular loom does not divide evenly over three because this is half and then this is a third. So there is 10 pegs here, 10 pegs here, and nine pegs here. And that is how I have my loom marked to do the short row shapings for my toes and heels, okay? Um, <clears throat> it is definitely something that you want to consider doing before you cast on to the loom because it's a lot easier to put these markers on before you start than trying to figure out how to do it after you start. Trust me. Even if you're not doing a sock pattern, it's always a good idea, if you can, to mark out your loom as far as stitch repeats and things to that nature. Okay, so let's get started. From here, what you need to decide is how you work around the loom. I'm going to move it this way because this is actually my starting peg. Do you work like to work clockwise or do you like to work counterclockwise? That is completely a personal preference. I am ambidextrous and can work both ways, but I find it much more comfortable to do my pearls working in the clockwise fashion. Okay, so having said that, right-handed people typically work more comfortably clockwise while left-handed people typically work better counterclockwise. Again, that is not set in, set in stone. That is completely your preference. So to do the Kitchener cast on, we are actually going to put our working yarn at the opposite end of our starting peg so that way when we cast on our yarn will be down here to start our sock or whatever you're using the Kitchener cast on for. This Kitchener cast on can be used for socks, for hats, anything that has any kind of shaping that you want. I personally only use it for socks. But again, personal preference. So the first thing we're going to do is put our working yarn on the loom. Because I am right handed, my tail is going to be towards my right. And my working yarn is on the left side of this peg. 
okay? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm getting ready to do. I'm just gonna kind of hold this tail with the loom until I get it casted on a little bit. I'm gonna pick up this working yarn and I'm gonna take it behind that first peg and in between the peg and the peg next to it. So that way the yarn is wrapping around the front of that following peg. I'm gonna go behind and do the same thing over here. I'm going between that first peg and the second peg to wrap the yarn around the front. And I'm gonna continue to do that. Going between those pegs and wrapping around the front of the next peg all the way across and down the loom. Now, you don't want this to be extremely tight, but you do want it to be taut. You also have to make sure that when you're doing this, that you get each peg. You don't wanna do something like this where you get two pegs. You wanna make sure that you're only getting one. You also want to make sure that you're not skipping a peg because all of this will matter when you get down to the other end of the loom as well as when you actually start your rounds, okay? So you can let go of that tail now. Okay, so we're getting down here towards the end. You wanna make sure that you get every peg. Every peg down here, because it is easy to miss one. Okay. So I'm down here, I've got the this peg wrapped. I'm going behind here and I'm gonna wrap this peg. So now I've got my yarn behind this peg and I've got this peg and this peg. Neither one of those have a loop on it. So I'm going to wrap this peg, okay? Make sure that working yarn goes behind that very last peg and then you're gonna bring it around towards the front. So now my yarn is going in the direction that is comfortable for me, okay? From there, I just kind of push those down a little bit. You grab your loom tool. I'll show you how to do a few stitches just so you know how to get started. I'm going to be doing the regular flat stitch. So I just kind of hold that yarn over there, pick up a loop and pop it over. Now you want to be very careful doing this because like I said, if one of these pops off, the whole thing is going to come unraveled. So once I get about three or four on there, then I find it easier to just do it this way. And I just kind of hold my finger back here on those loops just to kind of keep them secure. So that way they don't pop off, okay? And you do that all the way around the loom. And when you get back to your very first marked peg, the peg right before it, when you get back to this peg right here, you have done your first round and you have done the Kitchener half. Okay, so you should now have a loop on every peg all the way around your loom. If you are right-handed, your yarn will be going towards the left of the loom, 
clockwise, left-handed, your yarn will be going towards the right of the loom, which is counterclockwise. Okay, so from here, I just kind of push these stitches down just a little bit. You don't want them to go all the way to the bottom of the peg, but just enough to where you're, you can actually put your working yarn on top. Now, as I mentioned in that clip, you definitely want to be careful the first couple rounds after you do the cast on because if one of these loops pops off, the whole thing unravels. So, just be mindful of that and be extra careful on the first couple rounds. So, what we are going to do now is our first round of the Kitchener cast on. Our yarn is wrapped around our working peg. We are gonna go to our next stitch. We're gonna put our working yarn above the loop that is on the peg. We're gonna pick that loop up and we are going to scoop it over the top of that working yarn. I'm gonna do that again for you because I just noticed it was out of the camera. Our working yarn is across the top of our peg. We're gonna pick that loop up ever so gently and just pop it over the top. Again, working yarn on the top loop over the top of the peg. And we're going to do that all the way around the loom. Being, like I said, careful not to lose one of these loops because then you'll have to restart. Okay, so continue doing that all the way around the loom until you get to the peg before your marked peg. And then I'll meet you back. I wanted to pop in real quick because I did have a loop pop off. So I wanna see if you guys can see this. You see that loop right here? That actually popped off and it did it in a way that I'm actually going to be able to save it. As long as I don't pull too tight. I can grab that loop with my hook and bring it back ever so gently and pop it back on the loom. I was able to save it. <laughs> okay, so... By now, you should have knitted all the way around the loom to the peg before your marked peg for the beginning of your round. If you are right-handed, your working yarn is going to be on this side of your marked peg, and if you're left-handed, it's going to be on this side. From here, what we're going to do, and now this step is optional, but I do highly, highly recommend that you do this. It's just going to make your life easier when you are closing up the cast on later. Just take you a piece of contrasting yarn, lay it right here in the middle of your loom, and what you want to do is kind of bring the yarn through that gap underneath the stitches that you've already cast it on. You can do that with a crochet hook. You can do it with your loom hook. You just kind of got to finagle it to get it through that space. All right, so once you get that through, I just kind of flip 
my loom upside down and tie it in a bow so that way I can reuse it and also the bow it just kind of keeps it up here out of the way all right so now what we are going to do from here is we are going to go around the loom again one more time so that we will have two rounds of knit stitches on here which will can which will secure our kitchen or cast on. So go ahead and knit all the way around one more time until the peg right before your starting peg and we will join back up. But before I go, let me just mention, because you did just put this waste yarn on top of your working yarn, that is fine. Just kind of bring it around the front. It doesn't matter if the working, if the waste yarn is on top of the working yarn or not. It's not gonna affect your stitches. Um, you could always move it in between the stitches before you put on your yarn. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna affect what's going on at this point. So go ahead, knit all the way around, back to the peg before your marked peg at the beginning of the round, and I will show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, if you have made it all the way back around to the peg before your marked peg, congratulations. You have officially secured your Kitchener cast on. Now, from here, what we're gonna do is start our short row shaping for our toe. Um, for right-handed, we are going to start, we're gonna knit all the way from our beginning of round marked peg all the way over to our halfway point peg the one right before it. When we get to this peg, I'm gonna show you how to do the rapid turn. If you're on left-handed, your stitch marker should be on the opposite side, which in that case, you would be knitting all the way to this peg. And if they're not, that's okay. If you have not, if you're left-handed and you have not put them on the side, then you can just work it the opposite way. Just knit all the way over to this peg and then start your short row shapings, meaning you would knit all the way around actually to your first beginning peg. And then we were just gonna knit back and forth. It may be a little awkward for you being left-handed, but I promise it's gonna do the same thing. So, what we're gonna do now is we are going to knit all the way back to the opposite side of our loom to the peg right before our marked peg. don't have to hold your yarn really tight. You just kind of want to hold it taut. If you hold it too tight, especially when you're doing socks, um, you have the chance of taking the stretch out of the yarn. And you definitely want, don't want to do that because you want that bounce back that the, um, the sock yarn gives you because when when you knit socks you actually knit them with negative ease 
so that way they actually stretch to form to your foot and they don't, you know, slouch down and fall off as you walk or fall off in your shoe, that kind of thing. So we're almost around to this peg. Once you guys get the hang of it, you'll definitely be able to go a lot faster and you'll find your rhythm and a good way to hold your loom. I don't normally hold my loom like this when I am knitting a sock, but in order to get a good tutorial for you guys, I am having to adapt a little bit of how I would normally work. So, hopefully, this all stays in camera view for you and you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna knit this last peg before our marked peg. Now this peg does have the work, the tail coming from it. So we need to be a little extra careful with this peg for the first couple of rounds even after the short row shapings because you don't want this tail to pop off because right now you can kind of lift it and it will come right out. And if you do, then you'll actually lose a stitch and everything won't be even. So kind of just hold that off to the side if you can. You're gonna bring your working yarn between the peg that you just worked and the next peg. And this is gonna be the same way for all of these pegs that you're gonna wrap. You're gonna pick that loop up with your loom hook going down from the top, lift that off and kind of hold it to the back. You're gonna take that working yarn and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it between the peg and that loop. So that way the yarn is wrapped behind that peg. We're gonna pop that loop back on. So now we have wrapped it. Now we're gonna turn it by just going back and knitting in the opposite direction. Sometimes you gotta finagle that first one right there because you know, you've know you got your two loops and the yarn's not really wanting to go where it's supposed to. So now we're gonna knit all the way back to the other side and we're gonna wrap and turn our peg that is marked as the beginning of our round. You would do the same thing if you are left-handed. You're just going in the opposite direction. Again, you don't want to do this too tight. You just kind of want your yarn to lay on there. Let your fingers just kind of loosely hold the yarn, especially with the sock yarn. Okay, knit all the way back until the peg before your marked, next marked peg, and we'll wrap and turn again. Okay, we've knit all the way back around to the peg before our marker that marks the beginning of our round. We're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. We're gonna bring that working yarn in between those two pegs. We're gonna take our loom tool. We're gonna pop that loop off, making sure that you grab all the strands. <laughs> Put that working yarn behind that peg and in between that loop. Pop that loop back on and now it is securely wrapped around the peg. Now we're gonna go back and do the same thing 
<clears throat> but this time we are gonna stop one before the two. So what I mean by that is <clears throat> we're gonna knit all the way back to this peg. We're gonna wrap and turn this peg. Then we're gonna go back in this direction. We'll wrap and turn this one. Then we'll go back and wrap and turn the next one. We're gonna keep going back and forth, wrapping and turning each peg until you have two loops from this marked peg to this marked peg and this marked peg to this one. So continue working on those wraps and turns and I will show you what to do next. Okay, so we're almost back here to our other side and I just wanted to show you again how to do that wrap and turn. So I know that this is my last knit stitch because this one has two on it. So I know I need to wrap and turn that next peg. So I'm gonna bring that working yarn in between those two pegs pop that loop off, bring that working yarn behind, and pop that loop back on the peg. And then we're gonna knit back this way. And a way to know if you lay your loom down and you're in the middle of your decreases or your increases, a good way to know which direction, like say you're over here in the middle somewhere, a good way to know which direction you're going is to count. <laughs> so say I stop right here on this round. I can look back in here and say, oh, you know what? I've got two loops right here that are wrapped and I've only got one on this side. So I know I'm going in this direction. And the same thing goes for the increases in back. You just count to see which side has more or less, and that will help you determine which direction you are going when you're doing your short row shapings. So continue to do that until you have two loops from here to here and from here to here, and then I will show you how to do the increases. Okay, so I have wrapped my last peg and a good way to verify, just to make sure before you go any further, is that you have two loops on each peg from here to this mark stitch, and from here to this mark stitch. And you know this last one is ready because the yarn is going in the opposite direction. Now, right now, you should have some kind of like half crescent shaped right there. So now we're going to start the increases, which is going to be the exact opposite of what we just did. So now we are going to knit back to our first peg that has two loops on it. Again, right in, at this point, you still don't need to be holding the yarn too tight. You just want it to be taut. And like I said, you'll find a rhythm <laughs> which works best for you once you get the hang of it, you'll be flying through these socks in no time. All right, two more to go, one and two. Okay, so our next peg right here has two loops on the hook. We got one and two. So, What we are going to do 
is we're gonna take that yarn, we're gonna bring it to the front, we're gonna wrap it around that peg and go back this direction, okay? So the yarn is now going back in the opposite direction. And we're gonna treat those two loops that are on that peg as one. And we are just gonna pop those over. Now, sometimes if it's really tight, you may have to do one loop at a time. And if you have to do that, that is completely fine. This is the only time that you'll wanna make sure that you pull it tight. Because when you pull it tight, those little stitches kind of move over here to the side and that will cut down on any holes in your short row shaping, okay? So from here, we are gonna knit back in the opposite direction because now we're increasing. And this next one is gonna be a little tighter because we did pull this one a little bit tight. Sorry, I got out of the camera there. So we're just gonna knit back. I'm trying to go <coughs> a lot slower than I normally would so that I can show you guys exactly what to do. I'm sorry, I keep sliding out of the camera there. Let me back this out a little bit so I can stay in camera for you guys. Now see, if you pull these stitches too tight, it's going to be harder for you to knit them off. So you definitely just want to kind of guide that yarn over the top. All right. So we that slip, oh, that stitch almost slipped off. I was able to save it. I don't know if you caught that or not. <laughs> All right, so we're back to our marked peg. That's the first one that has the two loops on it. Again, we're gonna take it from the front, wrap it around the back, knit those two loops off. Okay, so I wanna show you a little closer on what happens when you actually pull that stitch. So you see the yarn right now. Watch what happens when I pull that stitch tight. You see how it kind of turns around over here to the front? That's exactly what you want it to do. So now you're just gonna knit back until your next one that has two loops on it. Wrap and turn, wrap and turn, wrap and turn. So all the way back and forth until you have worked all of the two loops off of your loom. And when you do that, we will be back to do the next part. All right, guys, I just wanted to pop back in and check on you. You should be doing your increases, working back and forth now to the first peg that has your two loops on it and going back and forth back and forth. The inside will start to look like this. As you can see, it's starting to do like a little divot here. And once you start going all the way around, that will be um, your actual spot that your toes go in. Welcome back. If you're still with me, Congratulations, you have done your toe short row shaping. Now, for me, the last loop 
two loops that I worked off was the beginning peg. If your last two loops worked off was on the opposite end, that is completely fine. You would just work back around the opposite side until you get to the beginning row. It's fine. It really doesn't matter which side you're on as far as when you end, as long as you get back to your beginning peg. So this is kind of what your toe's gonna look like. And you've got all this kind of hairy looking stuff going on right now. Don't worry about that. We are gonna close that area up once the sock is a little bit longer. So, from here, we are going to just start knitting all the way around and around and around and around. Right now, you can tell by looking at these stitches that you have two rounds on the loom. You have one and then the one about, above it is two. That's how you count. We are gonna go around again a couple more times until we have a total of five on this side. Once we have five rounds complete, then your toe is actually complete. From there, that is when we will start counting the rounds for the body of our foot. Now I am going to insert a picture of some measurements as well as have it linked to my blog and the link for that will be below. Um, this is just going to be a guidance. Now remember that you want to have negative ease for your socks so you don't want to exactly get the same measurement. Um, I will also show you in a couple rounds how we are going to actually measure our toe, okay? So, it'll give you an idea of when you need to stop because the measurement of your toe is going to be the exact same measurement of the heel. And that'll kind of give you an idea of how many rounds you need to do to complete the body. Um, I suggest that you write this down somewhere, especially if you're going to be using the same loom and the same type of yarn. So that way, the next time you know, okay, I do 65 rounds, and then I start my heel, or something to that effect. Um, again, for this demonstration, I am using the Loops and Threads Perfect Pair. This does not have wool in it. So I will be doing quite a few more rounds for the body than I normally would if I was using a wool nylon blend. So keep that in mind as well as you're working on your sock. If you think socks are something that you are going to enjoy doing, I would suggest getting some so type of sock ruler. This has the women's sizes, US sizes here on the side. And it has the men's sizes here in the middle. And then it has the European sizes over here. So, Basically, what you would do is kind of put the ruler inside, which like I said, right now it's kind of hard to determine because until you get these five rows over here, you really are not going to have a measurement of what your true sock is going to be as far as the toe. So, just continue working around and around for several rows, remember to start counting once you have five rounds on this side. Okay, 
I do want to show you this. When you get back to the opposite side of your short row shapings and you start working these stitches off, these stitches are gonna do something funky. You see how they're kind of rolling up here? That is perfectly normal. That is gonna do that until you get a couple more rounds on. And once you get down to the fifth round, you can kind of come down here on the inside and slightly tug to it. And those stitches right there will kind of just roll back in place. So if that starts happening on these rounds, these first couple rounds after your toe, don't get worried. That is completely normal. Okay, so I have done my five rounds. And it looks a little funky right now with all these stitches rolled up. And that's what I was talking about in the last little bit of the tutorial. So what you want to do is just come in here and just kind of lightly pull and it'll bring those stitches down where they need to be. Now you don't want to tug, but just kind of pull to them a little bit and you can kind of feel them uh, roll over if you will. See, so now they all look normal. So once you have all of those done, you've done your five rounds, your toe is officially done. And like I said, we will do something with this part later. From here, you are just going to start knitting in the round and this is where you will start your counting. So for me, with this particular yarn and my size Foot. I normally wear between a seven and a seven and a half women's shoe, US size. With this particular yarn, I'm going to knit 75 rounds before I get to the heel. Normally with um, a wool blend, I do 65 rounds. Again, like I said, um, look at that chart to kind of give you an idea and definitely please make sure that you write down the rounds that you do so that you will be able to make your matching sock. Um, once we have some more rounds on and this thing is kind of hanging down, we'll be able to get an accurate measurement of how much we actually use for our toe. It looks like it's gonna be about one and a half inches, which is about normal. One and a half to two inches, depending on your yarn. You could really, if you wanted to, fold it up and kind of do it right now. Uh, yeah, again, it's gonna be about one and a half inches. So, how you do this from here. Say that your foot length, based on your size, is six and a half inches. We know that we already have one and a half inches here, okay? So then that leaves us five inches left to play with. Well, we've got to remember that we're gonna need another one and a half inches to do the heel. So, that means that you would do your rounds until you have one and a half inches less than your actual foot length. Then you would start your heel shaping. So, 
<laughs> continue to work in the round until you get the body of your sock made. And then I will show you how to do the heel shaping, which you are going to be able to do because it is the exact same that we did for the toe. Welcome back to the second part of our tutorial. I am going to be leaving this part separate, but I'm also going to be joining it with part one and creating one large tutorial. So, depending on whether you're watching part two or the join, either way, welcome back. <laughs> so, um... I have finished the foot of my sock and I'm getting ready to start the heel short row shaping. But before I do that, I always like to close off the Kitchener. Okay. So, if you have your waste yarn in here, this is going to be perfect because it's gonna hold the stitches up and you know exactly where to start when you start pulling the stitches. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna look for your tail. So this is the tail from our original cast on. So we wanna start on the opposite side of the loom. So right here you see how the sock yarn is wrapped around this waist yarn. That is Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So then from there, I kind of put my fingers in through some of these little yarns. And you just want to try to find the very first one. And then you're going to start pulling it. And a way to know that you're pulling in the right direction is because you don't want the loop next to it to tighten down. You want it to be the opposite. So if you start pulling loosely and the one next to it starts tightening down, then pull on the opposite side. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so this one is ready. And I know that because I pre-started it. <laughs> so I'm going to go to my next one. And I'm just going to lightly tug. See how that loop is starting to work its way down. That's what we want to do. And you don't want to pull extremely tight. You just want to kind of... Let me go from this side. You just kind of want to pull it a little bit because these stitches are going to tighten up the further you go down okay and your yarn loop if you will will start to get bigger and bigger so now we're going to our next loop so see how that one's tightening down Bring it over here to the side. Like I said, you can put your fingers through here if you want so you can kind of see which yarn's next. You grab that next one and you just pull it down a little bit. Don't worry, like I said, don't worry about it being too tight because that will come out. If the stitches are loose, it will come out when you um, block your sock. Obviously, you want to pull it enough to where there's not a gaping hole. But if you pull it too tight, then it's going to make a um, line and it's going to kind of cinch down and you don't want that. And then you grab your next one. Okay, so here, if I pull up here, it's pulling from this side. 
and we don't want that. We want it to pull from this side. So that means I know that I've got to come down to the bottom and pull. And I will tell you that if you are using a yarn that has any bit of wool in it, you wanna be extra careful during this process because the yarn will felt. Definitely will felt. And this takes, you know, a little bit of time and practice and patience. But I feel like it's worth it. It makes such a pretty seamless join in your sock. I don't like the, um, there's like a gathered cast off you can do. And I, I don't like that on socks. I, I think it's perfect for hats, but not so much for socks. Okay. So this is what it's looking like. Now you can see a little bit right there because that waste yarn is still in. But once that we pull that out, you're not going to be able to see it at all. But you see how those stitches are just seamless. So we're going to continue to do that all the way across. And when we get over here to this other side, I'll show you what to do. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. So go ahead, rewind the video if you need to. But I'm sure you guys have it. And I'll meet you back in just a minute. Okay, I just wanted to pop back in because I've come to a point that is typical and I just wanna show you what to do. It appears as if this one is the next, but it's not. That's why I like to put my fingers in there so that I can kind of base. See, because if I pull to this one, it's actually pulling this one. And that's not the, this is not the right loop. So we're gonna pop that back over here on my finger and pull the correct loop. Always watch kind of where your yarn is pulling from so that way you know that you are on that correct loop, okay? All right, continue across, and if I run into any more scenarios, I will meet you back. Remember to pull gently and slowly. If this yarn had any wool in it, the way that it is bunching up right here, that would definitely cause it to felt. So just be extra careful and go slow when you are closing it up so that you do not felt your yarn. Now, I know this looks like a heck of a lot of yarn that some people may think is wasteful because there's, there's a lot here, okay? But what I do with mine is, number one, I save it in case it comes to a point to where I ever need any mending done. Or I will save it for scrappy socks. Um, you can do, you know, a couple rows or rounds of different colors in your heels and your toes, or you can add a little pop of color in your cuffs. There's lots of different things that you can do with, you know, that little bit of yarn that's gonna be left. So, you know, don't fret. You're, you're really not wasting it. There's many different things that you can do with it. But like I said, if you are using a yarn that does have wool in it, 
you definitely want to take this time a little bit slower. So we're getting over here towards the end. And before too much longer, these stitches are gonna be a little bit harder to see which one goes next. So you just pull it a little bit down to make it a little tighter. I definitely, like I said, like to put my fingers in so I can kind of guide and see which one's next. Maybe not so much towards the middle, but definitely when I'm on either edge, whether it's the starting edge or the ending edge. Just pull that a little bit tight. Like I said, not real tight, but taut. I bet you didn't think that uh, it was going to be this easy, did you? I know the first time I seen one of these being demonstrated, this closing, I was like, oh yeah, no way. No way in the world can I do that. And here I am. Not so many months later, showing you guys how to do it. So yeah, it's really, truly really is easy to do. I mean, I understand that it's, going to take some time to get it down because it, you know, it was like that for me. Oh, see, so I just pulled that stitch down. So what I like to do, excuse my arm reach. What I like to do in a situation like that, just to make sure that I'm grabbing the correct one, because sometimes it'll go down tighter. I will just take my loom tool and grab that loop and pull it back up just enough to where I can get my fingers underneath it without tugging it and continue to cast off or close up the Kitchener stitch. Um, there we go. Figure out where I'm at here because my loop. There we go. My loop closes up on me there. Okay, so you got two big loops. <laughs> what do I do? Well, feed them through so that you they're going in the correct direction. And just start closing that off because you know you always want to close off the loop in the direction that you're working from so if you are right-handed you're gonna be work like I am you're gonna be closing off from right to left and if you're left-handed you're gonna be closing off from left to right and it's still the same concept no matter which hand is your dominant hand. You just kind of follow the loops. And there's a lot more yarn, like I said, to play with once it gets down here. And I just kind of, every so often, just kind of pull it so it doesn't create a huge knot. And I think, like I said, that's just because I typically use yarn with wool in it. So it's just something that I've learned to do over the years so that it doesn't felt 
on me because the friction of pulling the yarn through these stitches to close them off is what will cause it to felt. So, like I said, just be gentle. Take that extra few minutes to do what you need to do. All right. I will be back when we get over here to this last section. Okay, so when you get over here to the end, you just wanna be mindful that you are pulling, like I said, the right loop. Because sometimes it's easier to get the wrong loop and it will close off a stitch that you don't want to be closed off. So, I just kind of pull these stitches apart. I can tell which one's next. And again, just, you know, ever so gently pull that yarn and it is a little bit more I wouldn't say harder and I wouldn't even say tedious cumbersome maybe because your yarn is getting longer now I don't want to cut the yarn you definitely do not want to cut the yarn I know it's a longer tail but you definitely don't want to cut it because then what you're gonna do is not be able to close those stitches off. So just go really, really, really slow and close those off. Like I said, it does get a little bit more cumbersome down here in this area because you've got a lot of yarn you're working with and it's easier for it to wind up on itself or not up like it's doing right here. Okay, looks like we got a couple more here. And it's gonna be a little bit tighter down here at the other end when you're pulling it through and that's just because you you're down here at the end of your toe shaping and you've got that waist yarn in there so it's going to be a little bit harder to pull but still try to do it as gently as you can so that you don't felt and so you get that stitch closed off okay so when you get down here to the other end, a way to tell if you have any stitches left to close off is to pull this working yarn, okay? Or your tail, rather. If that loop does not close off, then you know that there's another stitch in there that you need to pull, okay? And unfortunately, because this is a, did, did a color change right here, it's gonna be, it's a little bit harder to see. So then at that point, that's when I start using my loom tool and gently pull till I find the right one. You don't wanna pull too much because you don't wanna create a hole. Alright. 
and I will tell you that sometimes you will pull the wrong one at the end and if you do that's fine don't don't panic you just take it and pull it the opposite direction just pull it back out the way you just pulled it in so we're not there yet And you also want to be mindful when you're pulling up this yarn that you watch this tail because you don't want to pull it out, okay? Sorry, that you don't. You want to watch your tail because you want to make sure that it's not coming out. Okay, so let me zoom in here for you. When you get down here to this last little bit, the stitches are gonna look funky. So you just gotta kinda play with your loom hook. Like I said, go really gently because you don't wanna create holes and just lightly tug at one of those stitches. And if it gives way very easily like that just did, then you know you are on the correct stitch. All right, now let's see if we're ready to pull that tail yet. Not yet. So there's another stitch in there and you can kind of tell when you pull the tail where it is. Like I said, just use that your loom hook and just ever so slightly pull that loop up. See, so it's pulling from here, but this is also pulling my tail. So I can tell that that's my last stitch. I'm just gonna kind of hold on to that tail because you definitely don't want to pull that out. Definitely don't want to pull that out. Finish that up. Make sure you close it off really good. All right, and from here, we're gonna pull our tail that was from our beginning yarn when we cast it on in the very, very beginning. And when it gets to a certain point, feed that tail back through a loop just for securing purposes. Tighten that down. And then you're going to take a darning needle and just push that yarn through the inside and it cinches off even better. Okay, so now we're going to take our waist yarn and we're just gonna pull it out, okay? So now, you just wanna stretch it out just a little bit. And like I said, when you block it, all of this will seam itself back up. But there you have it. You have closed off your toe. And if you're still with me and you've done that, Congratulations, you now have a toe on a sock. So from here, what you would do is start your short row shaping again, the same way you did for the toe of your, of your sock. Okay, your working yarns over here. <coughs> 
except for this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work all the way over here. We're gonna wrap and turn this peg and then keep going back and forth like you did for the toe until you have two loops on each of those pegs. And then you are going to do your increases back out, okay? I will insert a clip here of how we did the toe because it is exactly the same as the heel, exactly the same, okay? So I'll insert that clip here and I will meet you back. Okay, I did want to mention something real quick before I send you back to the short row shaping clip that we did for the toe. You're gonna do the same exact thing for the heel that you did for the toe with one exception. And that exception is when you get to the point on your increases where you have two loops <laughs> on this marked peg and two loops on your beginning of round marked peg. At that point, I want you to start working in the rounds. So, if you have knitted back to this one and it had two and you knitted this and you come this way and this one has two, just treat that two as one and go all the way back around and then pick up the two on the other side. What that's gonna do is stop any holes that you may get on the side of the sock from the short row shapings of the heel. That is the only difference. Um, if you guys need me to do a separate video for that part, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna insert the clip for the short row shapings that we did for the toe and that step right there is the only difference. Now, from here, what we're going to do is start our short row shaping for our toe. Um, for right-handed, we are going to start, we're going to knit all the way from our beginning of round marked peg all the way over to our halfway point peg. The one right before it. When we get to this peg, I'm going to show you how to do the wrap and turn. If you're on left-handed, your stitch marker should be on the opposite side, which in that case, you would be knitting all the way to this peg. And if they're not, that's okay. If you have not, if you're left-handed and you have not put them on the side, then you can just work it the opposite way. Just knit all the way over to this peg and then start your short row shapings, meaning you would knit all the way around actually to your first beginning peg and then we were just going to knit back and forth. It may be a little awkward for you being left-handed, but I promise it's going to do the same thing. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to knit all the way back to the opposite side of our loom to the peg right before our marked peg. You don't have to hold your yarn really tight. You just kind of want to hold it taut. If you hold it too tight, especially when you're doing socks, um, you have the chance of 
taking the stretch out of the yarn. And you definitely want, don't want to do that because you want that bounce back that the, um, the sock yarn gives you. Because when, when you knit socks, you actually knit them with negative ease. So that way they actually stretch to form to your foot and they don't, you know, slouch down and fall off as you walk or fall off in your shoe, that kind of thing. So we're almost around to this peg. Once you guys get the hang of it, you'll definitely be able to go a lot faster and you'll find your rhythm and a good way to hold your loom. I don't normally hold my loom like this when I am knitting a sock, but in order to get a good tutorial for you guys, I'm having to adapt a little bit of how I would normally work. So, hopefully this all stays in camera view for you and you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna knit this last peg before our marked peg. You're gonna bring your working yarn between the peg that you just worked and the next peg. And this is gonna be the same way for all of these pegs that you're gonna wrap. You're gonna pick that loop up with your loom hook going down from the top, lift that off and kind of hold it to the back. You're gonna take that working yarn and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it between the peg and that loop. So that way the yarn is wrapped behind that peg. And we're gonna pop that loop back on. So now we have wrapped it. And now we're gonna turn it by just going back and knitting in the opposite direction. Sometimes you gotta finagle that first one right there because you know you've got your two loops and the yarn's not really wanting to go where it's supposed to. So now we're going to knit all the way back to the other side and we're going to wrap and turn our peg that is marked as the beginning of our round. You would do the same thing if you are left-handed. You're just going in the opposite direction. Again, you don't want to do this too tight. You just kind of want your yarn to lay on there. Let your fingers just kind of loosely hold the yarn, especially with the sock yarn. Okay, knit all the way back until the peg before your marked, next marked peg, and we'll wrap and turn again. Okay, we've knit all the way back around to the peg before our marker that marks the beginning of our round. We're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. We're gonna bring that working yarn in between those two pegs. We're gonna take our loom tool. We're gonna pop that loop off, making sure that you grab all the strands. <laughs> Put that working yarn behind that peg and in between that loop. Pop that loop back on and now it is securely wrapped around the peg. Now we're gonna go back and do the same thing, <clears throat> but this time we are gonna stop one before the two. So what I mean by that is 
and we're gonna knit all the way back to this peg. We're gonna wrap and turn this peg. Then we're gonna go back in this direction. We'll wrap and turn this one. Then we'll go back and wrap and turn the next one. We're gonna keep going back and forth, wrapping and turning each peg until you have two loops from this marked peg to this marked peg and this marked peg to this one. So continue working on those wraps and turns and I will show you what to do next. Okay, so we're almost back here to our other side and I just wanted to show you again how to do that wrap and turn. So I know that this is my last knit stitch because this one has two on it. So I know I need to wrap and turn that next peg. So I'm gonna bring that working yarn in between those two pegs, pop that loop off, bring that working yarn behind and pop that loop back on the peg. And then we're gonna knit back this way. And a way to know if you lay your loom down and you're in the middle of your decreases or your increases, a good way to know which direction, like say you're over here in the middle somewhere, a good way to know which direction you're going is to count. <laughs> so say I stop right here on this round. I can look back in here and say, oh, you know what? I've got two loops right here that are wrapped and I've only got one on this side, so I know I'm going in this direction. And the same thing goes for the increases in the back. You just count to see which side has more or less, and that will help you determine which direction you are going when you're doing your short row shapings. So continue to do that until you have two loops from here to here and from here to here, and then I will show you how to do the increases. Okay, so I have wrapped my last peg and a good way to verify just to make sure before you go any further is that you have two loops on each peg from here to this marked stitch and from here to this mark stitch. And you know this last one is ready because the yarn is going in the opposite direction. Now, right now you should have some kind of like half crescent shaped right there. So now we're gonna start the increases, which is gonna be the exact opposite of what we just did. So now we are going to knit back to our first peg that has two loops on it. Again, right in, at this point, you still don't need to be holding the yarn too tight. You just want it to be taut. And like I said, you'll find a rhythm <laughs> which works best for you once you get the hang of it. You'll be flying through these socks in no time. All right, two more to go, one and two. Okay, so our next peg right here has two loops on the hook. We got one and two. So, what we are gonna do is we're gonna take that yarn, we're gonna bring it to the front, we're gonna wrap it around that peg and go back this direction, okay? 
so the yarn is now going back in the opposite direction. And we're gonna treat those two loops that are on that peg as one. And we are just gonna pop those over. Now, sometimes if it's really tight, you may have to do one loop at a time. And if you have to do that, that is completely fine. Now, this is the only time that you'll wanna make sure that you pull it tight. Because when you pull it tight, those little stitches kind of move over here to the side and that will cut down on any holes in your short row shaping, okay? So from here, we are gonna knit back in the opposite direction because now we're increasing. And this next one is gonna be a little tighter because we did pull this one a little bit tight. Sorry, I got out of the camera there. So we're just gonna knit back. I'm trying to go <coughs> a lot slower than I normally would so that I can show you guys exactly what to do. I'm sorry, I keep sliding out of the camera there. Let me back this out a little bit so I can stay in camera for you guys. Now see, if you pull these stitches too tight, it's going to be harder for you to knit them off. So you definitely just want to kind of guide that yarn over the top. All right. So we that slip, oh, that stitch almost slipped off. I was able to save it. I don't know if you caught that or not. <laughs> All right, so we're back to our marked peg. That's the first one that has the two loops on it. Again, we're gonna take it from the front, wrap it around the back, knit those two loops off. Okay, so I wanna show you a little closer of what happens when you actually pull that stitch. So you see the yarn right now. Watch what happens when I pull that stitch tight. You see how it kind of turns around over here to the front? That's exactly what you want it to do. So now you're just gonna knit back until your next one that has two loops on it. Wrap and turn, wrap and turn, wrap and turn. So all the way back and forth until you have worked all of the two loops off of your loom. And when you do that, we will be back to do the next part. Okay, welcome back. I know by now you should have your heel shaping done. I have switched socks because the sock is in an actual spot of where we need to be for our tutorial to continue. So that way I can get it out quicker for you guys. Once you have done your heel, it should look something like this. So if you look at it, it does look exactly like a toe. They're mirror images of each other. Okay. From this point, you are going to work in the round the amount of times that you have determined for the leg of your sock. I don't like really, really high socks. I kind of like mm, between shorty and medium. So with this particular yarn, and I did write it down so that I could show you, because like I said, 
in the beginning of this tutorial, it does not have wool in it, so it's a little bit tighter of a stitch. I did 60 rounds for the leg, and for the cuff, I'm going to do a knit purl rib for 20 rounds. So now I'm going to show you how to do the knit and the purl cuff. Um, you guys should already be pro at how to do the knit stitch because we've been doing it the whole time. But just in case, <laughs> you're going to bring your working yarn in front of the peg on top of the loop and just pop that loop over. So our next stitch is going to be a purl stitch, which we have not done yet. Your working yarn is gonna go below the loop that is on the peg. You're gonna bring your loom hook down through that loop, and you're gonna turn it and scoop that loop up. You're gonna pop that off the peg and put the loop right back on. Next stitch will be a knit and then a purl. You're working yarn below. Put your hook through the loop going down. Bring that loop up. Pop it off. Put it back on the loom. Knit. And I'll show you a purl again. Again, your working yarn is below the loop that is on the peg. <clears throat> Bring that loom hook through going down and flip it and pull that loop up. Pop that loop off the peg. back on and that is how you do the knit one purl one rib we're gonna do that well I'm gonna do that for 20 rows you can definitely do it more or less I would suggest a minimum of 10 um, just to give your sock a little bit of uh, bounce back but do that for the amount of rows or rounds that you want and then when you're done with that, I will show you guys how to do the bind off. Okay, so I've done my rib. And now it is time to cast off. Um, so, what we're gonna do, and we're just gonna do a simple stretchy cast off. We're gonna wrap the yarn around our loom three times. Now don't pull it tight, but three times. And then we are just gonna always go a little bit further just for argument's sake. Cut our yarn. So we've ended our round here. Okay, we're going to skip our next peg, which would be the beginning of our round. And we're going to go to the peg next to it. If you are left-handed, you'll go in this direction. So if you are left-handed, you will actually skip. Let me pull that yarn back up here. If you're left-handed, you are going to skip this peg. You're going to start here and then go back to this one, okay? So, right-handed. Our yarn is coming from the peg that our last peg worked. Our next peg is our marked peg for beginning of round. The beginning of round peg is what we're going to skip. We're going to bring that yarn to the front. Okay. 
we want the yarn to be below it. So below the stitch that is on the peg. We're gonna put that loom tool through it and we're gonna pull it up. Okay, so let me pull this out and I'll show you. You got a lot of yarn here in the beginning, but so the working, the tail is actually coming up through the stitch, okay? So then we're gonna go back to the one that we skipped. And this one we want to come down. So we're gonna bring our, lo our loom hook through the bottom of the stitch. And we're gonna grab that working yarn and we're gonna pull it down. Now we're gonna go back. We've got the yarn coming from this one, so we're gonna skip this one and go to this one. We want it to come from <coughs> up. So we are gonna put our loom hook down, bring the yarn up. We go back to the one that we just skipped and this one we want to come down. So this one is gonna be above those stitches. So just put your loom hook through the two stitches that are on the peg. Grab that tail and pull it down. And we're gonna continue to do that all the way around the loom so you skip your next peg and you go up, the one that you skipped, you go down. You skip two, go up, down, up, down, all the way around until you get to the other side. Okay, we're almost back over here to the other side. We're almost finished. And if you have um, enough tail yarn, that's why I like to go around the loom at least um, three times. You're definitely going to have extra, but... Um, I like to give myself that wiggle room so I'm not having to pull this too tight. But what I do here is see, I've got two left. I've got my last peg of the round and then I've got my first peg of the round. And my yarn is coming between these from between these two pegs. I still will go around and come back up with this first peg of the round, the first one that we actually worked with, and do the same technique of the cast off. It's okay if you've got to go one stitch further, and um, the reason I like to do that is because I feel like it gives it just a little bit more of a... Um, a secure bind off okay and you can still go one past further and I will do that just to show you that it is completely okay it's not gonna make the bind off any tighter it's kind of awkward for me to hold the loom at this angle <laughs> but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. And it is a rainy, gloomy day here. So if you hear my puppies in the background, I'm sorry. But I can't have them outside today. All right, last stitch here. Now, the fun part. Just anywhere you want. I usually start at the opposite end of the cast on. 
just start popping those loops off the hook, off the loom rather. There you go. I mean, you can go fast. The, the more loops that you have off, the easier it's gonna be. Like really, you know, don't tug to it because you don't want to break the yarn or whatever, but see how easy those just pop right off. This is the fun part. That means you're done. It means you're done. My intentions were just to make this a video tutorial, but I have had a couple people ask if I would write up the pattern for it as well. So I will be working on that over the next week or so. Um, I will probably post it on my blog, but I will pin it in the comments below on the second half as well as the merged video so that you guys can see it when it's done. Okay. So our sock is off the loom, and you're probably thinking, holy cannoli, that just looks crazy. <laughs> Let me give you just a little tip. You can actually tug to these stitches. I'm gonna come up a little bit closer so you see what happens. Just lightly tug to it. You see what's happening? Those stitches are tightening down just like they will here. They are here. And you're going to have a nice cuff. Now, it does still look a little wonky, but like I said, it's going to need to be blocked. And you want it to be a little stretchy because honestly, you want it to be able to get on your foot. But that, my friends, is the recipe on how you do toe up socks on the loom. It's gonna look a little bit different than this if you are using wool, like I said, because this doesn't have the same stretchability as uh, wool socks would. Um, so your cuff is definitely going to look different if you're using a wool blend than it does here. From there, you just kind of uh, weave in your ends and voila, you are done. Congratulations on doing a toe up sock on the loom. And until next guy time, guys, happy knitting, happy crocheting, and happy looming. Bye.